Okay, hi there, Jeff back again with another in our series of key diagrams. We take a topic in microeconomics and work through with the absolutely vital diagrams that allow you to get top marks in your analysis in your papers. Diagrams matter, they really do matter when it comes to exams. So hopefully this next few minutes will be useful. Let's spend a bit of time together working through the third degree price discrimination diagram by a monopoly supplier. Now, third degree price discrimination, hopefully revising this, is perhaps the most common form of market segmentation by a business that has some monopoly power. And this is a really key diagram to know how to draw in the exam. It's quite a few moving parts, so practice drawing your diagram so you get them right ahead of time. Price discrimination, of course, involves selling the same product, essentially the same product, uh, to different groups of consumers based on their respective price elasticities of demand. And the aim, of course, is to drive revenues and profits higher, to squeeze people's willingness and ability to pay out of different groups. So here we go. This is a diagram where you can either draw a complex diagram or a slightly more straightforward, simple diagram. I'll, do, I'll go through both with you. So here's the more complex diagram, which involves three diagrams side by side. You have the whole market on the right, so-called non-segmented market, and then you might break it down into two sub-markets. There could be many more, but we just for simplicity's sake, we have two sub-markets, market A, market B. So, for example, market A could be I don't know, commuters, business users. Market A could, market B could be students or, or people like me, all their pensioners. <laughs> different, different groups of consumers. Now, okay, here's the uh, here's the idea you, that in one market you have a fairly inelastic demand, market A, and in another market, market B, you have a much more price elastic demand. Consumers are much more price sensitive in that one. Can you see that? In the example, they make your elasticity very different. It'll help the analysis. Uh, if you add those two demand curves together, you kind of get a quirky, kinky demand curve. It's not the kinks demand curve, but of course you've got a section of demand where demand's inelastic, and then you bring in a bit more price elastic demand. So you get a, a little quirky AR and MR diagram there in the in the whole market. Now, um, if the firm was just to profit maximise with one price, that would be where marginal cost meets marginal revenue, Q1. And that would allow them to sell at a price of P1 with a unit cost of C1 and make a profit, a supernormal profit shown. So in the right-hand diagram, that would be the price and the profit without any form of price discrimination. Okay. Uh, however, of course, what they could do is they could decide to segment the market and charge a different price. Now, if you haven't done this before, if demand is highly price inelastic, you can get away with charging more. And firms do. Whereas when demand is price elastic, consumers are much more sensitive to the price, perhaps lower incomes, you charge a lower price for the same good or service. So now we go from the right to left. I draw across, uh, it just so happens, by the way, that at Q1, that was the marginal cost of supply. And I'm assuming here, important assumption, that the marginal cost of supply is the same for both market A and market B. So if, you're, if we're both getting on a bus, the marginal cost of you and I getting on a bus is pretty much the same, I think, but we may get charged a different fare. Certainly true by, with, with rail services. You often sit next to people who've paid vastly different fares for the, same, for the same table, for the same service. So marginal cost is the same. Now, what you do is you then try and profit maximise in both markets. So in market A, where demand is priced inelastic, you can charge a high price, PA. Notice there that PA is well above what the price was at P1. And the reason why you charge a high price is because you can. Consumers are willing and able to pay. And of course, that means that you get extra revenue. You couldn't charge PA in market B. In fact, there wouldn't be any demand at all in market B if you charge PA. So you charge a lower price. You profit maximise in both markets. And you might sell a lot of output in market B, Q2, at a lower price. And again, you can make a profit because the price you're charging for each extra customer is greater than higher than the marginal cost of supply. So market B has a, has a high elasticity of demand and therefore you charge a low price. Market A has a low price elasticity of demand and therefore you charge a high price. As a result, uh, you can make a profit of uh, that orange shaded area in, on the left-hand side and a nice tidy profit in market B as well. Uh, price discrimination is a way of driving revenue and profit. Now, the naked eye, 
needs needs to be used here, maybe a bit early in the morning or late at night. But I think those two orange areas are bigger than the green area. For this simple diagram, you get rid of the third bit. Let's go back a slide. You get rid of the third diagram and you just use the other diagram. You just you, you can actually draw two if you want. So a simple, a super simple diagram is to draw the market A, market B, the same marginal cost of supply. Make clear in your analysis paragraph, tell the examiner that you are assuming a constant cost of supply. Marginal cost equals average cost. That's quite important to make that clear in the answer so that it becomes marginal and average cost, constant returns to scale. Um, so providing the price charged to each subgroup is higher than the cost, then you can still make a profit, even if you're selling uh, the product to some people at a low price, as in market B. There we go. Uh, important diagram, third degree price discrimination, a really key one if you get a question on it, particularly in, in the exam well worth practicing ahead of your papers. Stay positive, stay happy, stay curious, and hopefully see you again sometime soon. Cheers now.